Good morning to you all, distinguished colleagues, uh, Mr. President, Mr. Carlos Lim, uh, Irina Bokova, dear commissioners, let me offer you a very warm welcome here at the Yale Club for the 10th meeting of the Broadband Commission. As always, it's a great uh, pleasure to see you all, and I would like to thank you, every one of you, for joining us today, and especially for your continuous uh, passion that you have displayed over the past four years. Without you and without your commitment to the Commission's work, the Commission could not succeed. Our meeting today will be conducted in accordance with the Chatham rule, uh, Chatham House rule. You will see on the screen the exact definition. Essentially, can you throw the definition on the screen here? Essentially, we may share the information externally, but we cannot attribute names. Chatham House rules will cease at 15 hours today when we will be joining by our we will be joined by our friends from the media let me give a very special thanks to our friend dennis o'brien who hosted us in dublin where is dennis sitting i saw him just now yes. he just yeah he just stood up, stood up to our mom because he knew i'm going to say his name so he, he, he ran away <laughs> yeah but i would like to really thank him for uh the very productive meeting. It was pleasant and productive at the same time in Dublin this year, and he raised the bar very high, and I'm sure that we'll try to beat him again here in New York. Today's, uh, today, as usual, we have a, an exciting and very full agenda, and later on we will be uh, hearing about the progress being made in broadband when we launch the State of Broadband 2014 report, to which so many of you have contributed. Personally, I feel very proud of this uh, document. We will, of course, present it later on to uh, Secretary General's uh, special representative, the Deputy Secretary General, because uh, Secretary General is today uh, in a big rally, so he could not be here with us, but uh, Mr. Eliasson will be here and I uh, will be able to provide him with a copy of this very good report. I very much want to make sure that we have time for fruitful and interactive uh, discussions today, so I'll keep my opening remarks brief. I would like to say the, the, some of the things that we've done over the past four years. Uh, when the Commission started its work, for example, there were fewer than 65 countries with a national broadband uh, plan, and today we have over 140 in the world. And I'm convinced that, that our advocacy and policy leadership has played a significant role here. In the summer of 2011, we saw recognition being given to internet access as a human right by Frank Delarue, uh, the UN Special Rapporteur on Promotion and Protection of the Right to Freedom of Opinion and Expression. We reflected on this radical change in mindset in our Broadband Commission, which the Commission issued at the Broadband Leadership Summit later that year. In just four years, we have, gone, we have gone from seeing ICTs as more or less useful gadgets to seeing them as a powerful platform for social and economic progress. The Commission's research and analysis has also helped to demonstrate the benefits of broadband for economic growth and productivity. Distinguished Commissioners, there is still significant work to be done. However, and despite our best efforts, we stand in grave danger of repeating the mistakes of the past and omitting ICTs from SDGs as we did with the MDGs. From the sustainable development to the Millennium Development Goals. So I shall be particularly interested in the first substantive session this morning, which addresses the crucial role that ICTs and especially broadband will play in the post-2015 development agenda. We shall be hearing in particular about the work of the Broadband Commission's Task Force on Sustainable Development and its latest publication. Our second session this morning will, will dive further into the issues of level regulatory playing fields. And as you will remember, this issue generated a little 
a, a very lively debate in Dublin. I'm looking forward to hearing more on this topic today, as well as to finding out about the activities of the Commission's Working Group on Financing and Investment, which, has, which also has a new publication to share with us. The first session of this afternoon will look at what we need to do next, and I hope that this will address not just the Commission's own future, but also the major strategic and tactical steps which still lie ahead of us in our quest to bring broadband to all the world's people. Our final session this afternoon will give us the opportunity to share and review the Commission's annual report, the State of Broadband Commission, well, the State of Broadband 2014, Broadband for All, and we will hear some highlights from authors and contributors, as well as having an update on the Broadband Commission's advocacy target. Uh, I know that yesterday there was a very, very productive uh, meeting of the Commission of this uh, working group on gender, and I would like to congratulate Helen Clark and uh, Mrs. Fumzile for the hard work, and of course, all of you who have attended that task force meeting. Um, on, final, on the final session this afternoon, we, uh, we will have the opportunity to share and review, no, no, that's uh, the, 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 the commission. And today's debate will give us opportunity to, to hear um, some predictions about what the future of broadband might look like. And I would like to rely, to, to, I would like to really welcome any provocative and out of the box ideas here. I know you guys can really do that. Indeed, let me encourage you throughout the day to speak your minds and to bring your often divergent opinions to the floor. The success of this commission depends on the wide range of differing and yet complementary views we are able to bring together with such a powerful mix of personalities companies, organizations, and institutions. So let's set ourselves the goal today of seeing just how many voices around the world, around the table, we can hear from. And that means keeping each intervention short, timely, and relevant. We're here at the, in the Yale Club, in the shadow of thousands of inspirational alumni, including, of course, Samuel Morse, who did so much to advance the cause of communication technologies in the 19th century. So let's be inspired to communicate and let's have a great day here in New York City. Let me, let, uh, let me close my remarks by giving a very warm welcome to our special guests here today, starting with uh, His Excellency Ambassador Jan uh, Eliasson, Deputy Secretary General of the UN, who is uh, coming here just before lunch representing Ban Ki-moon, the UN Secretary General. We are also very pleased that Greg Barat from Google and Dr. Yael Maguire sitting over here, right across the table from me, from Facebook, are here, along with other industry representatives, including Eric Loeb from at and I also want to welcome Tom Wheeler, the chairman of the FCC and look forward very much uh, to hearing his views on how industry and regulators can work, uh, 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 can work together. I had uh, the great honor to visit Tom in his office uh, just a few weeks after he took office. And let me tell you, uh, he will be a perfect fit for this commission. From the investment community, we welcome Pierre uh, Giselin from the World Bank, and Alex uh, Rugamba from the African Development Bank. We are also honored by the presence of Professor Klaus, Schau uh, uh, Klaus Schwab, founder and chairman of the World Economic Forum. Uh, Klaus uh, wanted to be here, and he, uh, uh, as you know, he has offered us to organize the commission's meeting during the WEF this year, uh, in, in January. And uh, we are, he is now offering us to make that meeting a regular one. And I would like to take the opportunity to thank Azerbaijan 
for sponsoring that event in there. I understand Minister uh, Abbasov is not here today, but he's very ably represented by my good friend, Dr. Elmir uh, uh, Velizade, uh, the Vice Minister uh, for ICTs in Azerbaijan. So I'd like to thank him again. And last, but very far from least, let me acknowledge my colleague and my very good friend, Hulin Zhao, Deputy Secretary General of ITU, who has supported me all these years. Uh, he's present here to make sure that there is a real continuity in the work of the Commission. As you know, I will be standing down, stepping down at the end of this year, and uh, the Commission's work uh, should continue. What you do is important in life, but what you leave behind is even more important. And I hope that the work is co this Commission will continue and continue to shine. And uh, I have no doubt about that because uh, the, the mix of this group, the fact that all of you, each and every one of you, have accepted our call, Irina Bokova and I, to join this commission. I, I still, I, I'm still very much impressed by ourselves because we were able to bring you guys together here. With and bringing you, yes, yes, with, with a lot of modesty. Bringing you guys here on, on, and having you met, meet every time on Sundays <laughs> is simply great. But the passion that you brought here is one thing that I, I'm going to take, take in my new capacities from January this year. And, and let me tell you, uh, I, I, sh I just want to uh, uh, quote here Ar Arnold Schwarzenegger, I shall be back. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now let me pass the floor back to, to Carlos Harke. Thank you.